What's up guys, Violet here and in today's video what we're going to be doing is another episode of Destiny Mythbusters, the one show that you guys really seem to enjoy. So before the episode does start, we can go on to get another 2,000 likes, that'd be greatly appreciated and thank you guys so much for the amount of support. Also hit that subscribe button if you are new around here and you do enjoy the content, we're getting close to 50k subscribers. So, let's jump into uh, this week's episode then. This week's episode we've got a couple of interesting ones. Um, uh, we got a quite a, I guess you could say a funny one, I don't know, but anyway, let's jump right into it then. The first one is from Sewage, and he says, Myth, can a shoulder charge with the Peregrine Greaves kill a self-res warlock with armor of light? Also try blocking with the sword. So, I'm going to play the footage and I'll get back to you. So as you can see, no, it cannot. Uh, it, it, it doesn't even really affect a warlock with armor of light. There's no even need to try even blocking with the sword. Armor of light will protect you. But um, I believe I recorded us actually. Um, well, I'll, obviously you guys know if I did or not because the footage would have played. But I believe I recorded us uh, doing it with like no armor of light or anything. And yes, you die pretty much instantly if you do self res and you have uh, Peregrine Greaves get kicked into your face. So um, with armor of light, no, you uh, you will survive. But without armor of light, you're dead. There's no coming back. Moving on then to the next one, which is from Daniel Yeary, and he says, "What happens when you fire Telesto at a Jug Titan or Titan or?" I was very freaking Jug Titan or Shield. I don't know what the hell I was trying to say there. What happens when you fire Telesto at a Jug Titan, and the Titan lowers his shield before the Telesto rounds detonate? Now I thought this was a really cool one because it's one of those interesting ones that you don't really see too often out there. And when I see ones like this, I really enjoy doing them. So I'm going to show you the footage and I'll get back to you. Available. So as you guys can see, uh, sadly, well it took a couple of attempts to be honest, it took quite a lot of attempts, but sadly, when the shield does disappear, the Telesto rounds just float in front of the Guardian, and yes, they still do die. So that's kind of a bummer there. I was hoping that maybe what would happen is when the shield disappears, the um, the Telesto rounds would just float in midair and you can run past them instead of it just staying attached to the Guardian itself floating in front of them. Kind of annoying, but it is what it is, we have to accept it. Moving on then to the next one, which is from Flay XR, and he says, Miss, go into private matches with the lowest level possible for Crucible with the lowest light. Someone else is going to be light 400, put on light level advantages, and equip Ill Will Hat and Cannon with luck in the chamber. Can it one shot now? The problem with this myth, before I show the footage, is I can't be the light, lowest light possible. So you guys are going to have to kind of judge this clip yourself. I'm going to show you the footage and how we did it, and then I'll talk about like the judging of the clip. So here we go. ammo on the way. Heavy ammo available. So as you saw, me with my light level, it didn't one hit, one kill me. Both of my friends had ill will hand cannons at 400 light, I was the lowest light possible, and they had luck in the chamber, and it didn't one hit kill me. It was close, but it didn't one hit kill me. Now my question is, well, it one hit kill me when my friend popped a weapons a light bubble, but my question is, 
if I had a lower light, would it kill me? Because it got it, me down pretty damn low, but sadly, I can't be the lowest light, and I don't have a luck in the chamber ill will. So, you know, that one, it's, uh, I guess it's one of the unique things here. It's up to you guys to decide, or maybe some of you guys have tested that out. Who knows? But anyway, let's move on then to the next one, which is from Destiny's Savior. And he says, Myths, does a swarm grenade work as a wall to block you from bolt casters lightning? It works with rockets, though. And yes, it can, I can confirm it does work with rockets. I don't know if it's that great. Maybe I was doing it wrong, but um, they tend to destroy the uh, the the swarm grenades pretty quickly. But I'm going to show you the bolt caster footage, and I'll get back to you. Heavy ammo inbound. <laughs> Heavy ammo available. So as we saw from the bolt caster footage, uh, showed many clips probably where uh, it just goes straight through. It goes straight through. There's no stopping a bolt caster, uh, unfortunately. It would be cool to see if it would work. Maybe you could use it in trials with tactics like your friend needs being revived, and some reason the enemy have got a bolt caster on, and you just chuck swarm grenades in front of the uh, revive ghosts and bobs your uncle. You'll be able to revive them. But you know, it is what it is. That can't work. That's kind of annoying. And uh, the next one is from Luke Doyle. He says that the first myth wasn't a red snipe that was a self res now he's talking about the previous video I did me being an idiot I uh, tend to read things over and not really think about them there's a myth where it said can the queen breakers bow res snipe and I thought it was self res warlock shooting in the head so yeah we're going to be following up with that in today's episode and I actually do try the actual res snipe so here's the footage for the follow up So as you can see, uh, no, it cannot red snipe. It gets them down pretty damn low, but it cannot red snipe all the way, unfortunately. It took a crap ton of attempts to get this. It's actually quite hard to red snipe with the Queen Breaker's bow accurately. Uh, for me, anyway, I don't know. Maybe I'm just cack. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that was that one tested, I guess you could say. Moving on then to the next one, which is from uh, TDKR21104. I know this is a bonus myth. He says, myth, is it possible for people to not teabag... Teabag? See, I can't fucking... <laughs> Teabag? I can teabag after every single kill. And he says, yes to Overwatch. And the reason why he says yes to Overwatch is because in a video, uh, I think two Mythbusters ago, so I do take comments from old Mythbusters as well, if there's any new ones on them. And uh, I actually asked, should I do Overwatch Mythbusters as well? Like maybe do some Overwatch content try and switch it up here and there I'm still thinking about it I'm not entirely sure if I will or will not but um, I'm going to show the footage uh, with the uh, is it possible for people not to teabag after every single kill and I guess it will sum up itself here we go
So as you can see, like, I don't know what it was, I was in a private match with my friends and every time I killed them, my character would just automatically teabag, it definitely wasn't me pressing the buttons, my character would just automatically teabag and I, I don't know, it was just, it was what it was. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, uh, if you did be sure to leave a like, that'd be greatly appreciated. Also leave a comment down below your next myth for the next episode of Mythbusters and also hit that subscribe button if you're new around here, we're on the road to 50k. My name has been Violet and I'll see you guys on the next video.